What's up everyone, this is Sam from Rococo and today I'm going to be walking you through the new Rococo Studio live streaming plugin for Maya. Uh, this plugin allows you to do live streaming for body and face motion capture data directly into Maya from Rococo Studio. You can then record that motion capture data to a character. You can also use our command API to actually control Rococo Studio from within Maya. So let's get started. Um, in order to enable the live streaming Maya plugin, uh, the first thing we're gonna have to do is go to rococo.com and just grab the plugin. So if you go to rococo.com and you go to learn, and then you go to help and community, we have another little page that pops up here. And if you go down to the Rococo Studio live plugins area, we have this installing Rococo uh, live plugin in Autodesk Maya. Um, download the plugin, Boom, let's follow the instructions. You should get a prompt. I've already downloaded it. Once you've downloaded that plugin, um, you can put it in the Documents Maya 2020 Plugins folder, um, or you can browse to it and actually find it within Maya. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment when we activate the plugin, um, which actually we can do right now. Okay, so I've put this plugin, it's, uh, it's called rslm.mml. Uh, uh, or .mll, and if we go into Maya now, boop. the way that you activate plugins in Maya is you go up to the Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager here, click on that, and I've already got this uh, showing up in my plugins because I, I placed it in that folder that Maya knows to look in, which is in my Documents uh, Maya 2020 Plugins folder. And I actually, there was no folder called plugin, so I had to create it in this case. Um, you can also hit browse, and then you can, you know, if it's on your desktop or something, I would recommend putting it in this folder just to keep things organized. But if you want, you can just browse, activate it that way, and then you know that you're activating that plugin. Okay, so now let's jump over to Rococo Studio. So here we are again. I've already gotten in my Rococo SmartSuit Pro right here, as you can see. Um, I have uh, added my um, actor profile here and I've added my suit into my actor profile. So I'm all ready to go in the studio, as you can see. And we'll just do a quick straight, actually I don't even need a straight pose, I'm, it's, uh, we're looking good. So in order to enable the live streaming, what we're gonna do is go over to this start live stream and this will bring us to this Rococo Studio live area where all of the other live uh, plugins are located. And in Rococo Studio 1.16 and higher, you will have this Maya plugin here and we can enable it. Boop. And if we click settings, you can get uh, the port number. Um, and so now this is enabled. And if we jump back into Maya, we can actually load this plugin up. Turn on auto load, why not? close it and nothing actually pops up because uh, you actually need to just put in a quick mel command down here just to make the uh, interface you know pop up so that command is show Rococo Studio Library or live Maya not library if we hit do that boom here we go this prompt uh, pops up and all of this information is also located in the release notes it's on that help page that we were just on if you run into any problems, um, all this information is there as well. Um, okay, so let's jump back into Maya. And we have our Rococo Studio Live. So these ports are correct. Um, you, you can check it, as I said again, by clicking this gears, 14043. We'll actually X out of here. Go back into Maya, 14043. And this, this is normally set up, you know, by default, this should work well, but if you need to check anything, you can. Um, this scene scale here, we'll, we'll get to in a moment, but first let's just hit start receiver. So there we go, boom. We know that uh, Maya is talking to Rococo Studio because we can see that this is my actor profile and then this is the actual suit right here. If we jump into, you know, Rococo Studio, all this matches up. So we are connected. Now there's nothing here. And that's because you don't actually have a skeleton yet, but we've made it really easy to automatically generate a character definition in a skeleton so you, you can then retarget um, your animation. And, and this is all, yeah, it's crazy simple, in part just because Maya is so good at doing this retargeting. So 
In order to get your skeleton generated, you're just gonna click on the suit here, and if you right click on it, you can hit Create HIK Skeleton. So what we've done now is we've just created an HIK skeleton that can be used. It's not paired yet, and to pair it, we're gonna right click this again and hit Map to Active Character. And there we go. So I'm sitting here, as you can see, and it's already working. Um, you know, I can stand up and you can see that it's tracking all my motion. Um, yeah, we have, this is, this is exactly what we want. So the process is really simple, as you can see, um, and, and it's quite reliable and it works really well. And we'll go through facial uh, mocap in a second as well. So before we get to face mocap, let's actually go over this Studio Command API here, because this is, this is another cool feature. So if we jump into Rococo Studio, and we go up to settings here in the top left corner, and we go to Command API, we can turn this on. Um, if you're a pro user, you have this, this feature. Um, so now that this is turned on, if we go back into Maya, and we can see here that we have some issues, right? My, my leg isn't looking right anymore. Maybe we need to do a calibration. Well, because we have the command uh, API, we can go into Maya and here we can just click calibration. And so there we go. Maya is talking to Rococo Studio. And uh, so you can do all of that uh, stuff directly from inside of Maya. So before we get to facial capture, let's actually throw a character in here and get it uh, all hooked up together. And then we can record something quickly because you can record directly to the timeline, any keyframes, you know, any, or any motions that you're doing in Rococo Studio to your character in Maya. So I have a character here. This character is HIK ready. It's a little alien. Um, because it is, when I, when I add the character, we get uh, this character definition already added. So, if you don't have a character that already has a character definition or is HIK ready, say from Mixamo or something like that, you can follow our tutorials for how to characterize a, uh, you know, a model or a rig within Maya. It's really easy. Basically, you just uh, define the bone structure here. You know, you'll click on hip and you'll define it. We have a great tutorial on this, which we will be linking to. So check that out. If you need help with a character that isn't just going to pop up, you know, when you add it to Maya, it just pops up already. That's not always the case. That that's only with you know HIK ready uh, models that are that are ready to do this. So again, check out that that tutorial if you don't have you know if your model is not like this one. But this model is ready to go. So because it is, and because we generated a character definition when we you know added in this rig, to get it retargeted, all we have to do is select our character as the alien and select the source as our skeleton, and there we go. And as you can see, some things have drifted. So if we say wanted to do another uh, calibration, we could, let's do that. As always, my feet are below my hips and my hands are resting gently at my sides. And there we go. And so this character uh, is looking great and uh, I need to, you know, be careful where my head is here but it's really as easy as a couple of clicks to get everything working together. So let's record something really quickly to the timeline. And I'm not gonna go crazy because I'm screen capturing this right now and it, it's giving us a little bit of lag. It's not because of the program, it's because of uh, I've got a couple things running on this machine. But in order to demonstrate this, let's hit start recording. Okay, we're now recording all these keyframes uh, in directly into the timeline. Oh, we can, you know, maybe do one of these. Ugh. Okay, let's hit stop recording. And as you could see there, it was counting up the keyframes that it was actually recording. Let's sit back down. And in order to see your recording, we're gonna need to stop the receiver because currently we're still obviously transmitting all this data. Um, but if we hit stop receiver, and then we go to the beginning of the timeline, 
And remember, when you start recording, whatever frame you're on, Maya is going to take as, as frame zero. So make sure you're in frame zero when you actually record something. But if we play this back, there we go. Oh yeah, let's see the, hold on. There we go. And you get better at, well, part of the reason this is so cool is because sometimes with mocap, you know, you have a hard time knowing where a character's body part maybe is intersecting. When you have this live feedback and you can actually see the whole process happening in real time, it allows you to kind of, you know, be able to navigate some of that stuff. Um, and maybe, you know, on, on the next one, I would be able to kind of, you know, know how large this head is because I can actually see it in my viewport. Okay, let's turn the receiver back on. Up, oh, and we're looking kind of funny because we're sitting down. Um, let's do some facial mocap. So actually we're going to stop this receiver and we're going to go back into Rococo Studio and I'm actually going to unpair this character profile. So I, I haven't set up for facial mocap and we have lots of tutorials about that. Um, but for this one, we're just going to look at some recorded mocap that we already have. And this was some facial mocap I recorded the other day. <clears throat> and also, um, although we were just actually using the suit in order to live stream, we could also use an animation that we had already made with the mocap, uh, with the SmartSuit Pro. It doesn't have to be streamed, you know, with an active SmartSuit Pro. Similar to this, this is a recording we made before. We can also live stream this into Maya. Okay. So let's go back into Maya. And we're gonna start a new scene here. Okay, totally clean. So everything is still on. You know, we, if we go to live stream, it's still still on, everything is still going. And what we need to do now is load in a model that has been prepped for this process. So you can get, you can find models like this online. Polywink is a service that uh, creates blend shapes for, for facial mocap models. We also have a really cool workflow, which we're gonna be showing soon. Um, that involves the Daz Marketplace, and there's a way to uh, get the 51 blend shapes automatically generated using some plugins onto Daz characters. So you're gonna need a facial mocap model that is ready to accept uh, facial mocap. And, and that, for more information on that, you can always uh, reach out to us at, at support at rococo.com or, or look online for other tutorials on how to find those models, because that is kind of something that you need to make this whole process work in and of itself. So we have our, uh, we're just going to use our Rococo uh, model that we actually use inside of Rococo Studio. So this is rigged. Um, and, and again, check in soon for more tutorials on how to find these models, especially within Daz. We think that's a really good way to do it, although it involves a couple plugins. Um, but in this case, we have this, this model and it's ready to go. So assuming you have that, you would go into Rococo and everything is is ready to go um, and when we go into Maya what we can do is we first have to start the receiver so now we're seeing that this face capture data is in here and let's play this so we'll just leave this running Ooh, chat 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 okay this is just running so we, we know, we can see that inside of Rococo, we have some active data. If we select our face geometry, and then we right click on the face here in the Rococo Studio Live um, interface, and we hit map to selected objects, that's step one. So now it's mapped to this geometry. Step two is we right click again, we can go to auto weight, uh, auto map weights. So this is going to, you know, map to the correct weight value uh, for all those blend shapes. So if we hit this, there we go. We are now seeing the Rococo face capture data streaming live uh, into Maya. You know, we go back. You know, it's paused. Uh, so this is all working correctly. And it's amazing how seamless and kind of easy this is considering how difficult this has traditionally been just to retarget this data, especially live. Um, you know, those two clicks, right click map and then right click 
auto map weights and, and that was it. Um, which is really awesome uh, because these, these uh, tools have traditionally been very difficult to, to come by. Um, final thing with this interface here, we have a couple links. Uh, if you ever need more uh, you know, links to the documentation, you can find them right here, website, our license, also the forums, um, just some general info you know, sitting here. Um, you can feel free to minimize that and um, boom, that is pretty much it. The one thing that we are not going over right now is that all of this works with our virtual production tools as well. If you have some Vive trackers that are using that you're using for object tracking, they will essentially just show up right in here. And then you can parent them to uh, different objects that you have in the scene. You know, maybe you have a tracker that you're using as a camera. Um, you can parent that to uh, you know that that camera or something to the Vive tracker. Uh, in Rococo Studio, and, and it all works in the, in the same way. This scene scale can also help to dial in some of those tracking parameters. Um, you know, it, we, it, it can help offset the position and make sure that your, um, your parented objects to those, to those tr virtual production trackers are actually showing up in the right place in your, in your live streaming scene. So that was pretty much it from us for this tutorial. Uh, we hope this was helpful. As I said before, always feel free to reach out to us directly at support at rococo.com or leave a question in the comments below and we are very attentive and we'll get in there and uh, help you out. So um, just another one of our really cool tools that, that has just recently come out alongside the motion library for Maya. Stay tuned for more updates. We got a lot of fun stuff coming out soon and, um, and, and yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, bye.